Romans uh, was established before the Second World War. The brothers Goldwins went off to the war and came back and restarted again after the war. Always in London, providing accounts and seeing general services to all sorts of businesses, all owner controlled businesses, and um, have built up from there. The, the firm has built up over a period since uh, 1940 uh, uh, to three offices and about 100 staff. In uh, 19 Seven, two offices decided to demerge, and uh, as I'd already been in London office for quite a long time at that point, I decided just to take the London office on my own as well. So we all split up. There's still two other Goldwyn's offices around the country, um, and you have to watch out if you're emailing the sort of thing at the ventilation and get the right one. Don't want the other guys on us. Okay, in the area, maybe. Uh, I'm shouting quite loud here, so it must be the din in the background. Okay, okay. Um, services that we offer are all the usual accounting, taxation, compliance services for businesses of all sorts. Some specialist things we wouldn't deal with because it's just too complicated, too costly, it's too long for them, basically. But we have all sorts of businesses in all sorts of sectors. We have a, a bookkeeping service, principally Sage, QuickBooks. We have a payroll service, and obviously a year-end account service and consequent uh, tax services. We do a lot of personal tax, a lot of corporate tax, um, and uh, we take all that burden off the business owner. Accountancy and tax is uh, ever more complicated. The government may try to kid you that it's getting simpler, but it's not. Everything is more regulated, it's more time critical orientated. As far as the revenue are concerned, there's a penalty for everything. If you're late, you just get an automatic fine. So all businesses need to be geared up to fight on time especially with MTD, basically digital tax filing coming in, and it's already in for VAT. Um, you need to gear up for that. You need to have somebody or somebody like us on board who can deal with that aspect for you. Most of the services are time costed. So the better the information you can give your accountant, cheaper it's probably going to be for you. The more accurate the information, again, the cheaper it's going to be for you. You find that some accountants do give fixed price fees. Uh, yes, they can do that, uh, but in the background they'll be pricing it up, and if that fixed fee is not going to cover their time, they're going to be back, back to you. And um, fixed fees can be a little bit deceptive in a way, because build in some margin obviously and quite often you find that the better clients are, are paying a bit over the top because they're finding the clients that do not put so much energy and uh, resource into their admin accounting function so it can, can be a bit unfair at times but possibly worth looking at so we deal with all the usual functions um, we also offer a insurance to pay for professional fees if there are any investigatory matters for the revenue. We wouldn't promote it to every client, but certainly some where we feel it, it could be of use, um, it's worthwhile having. With that, you would get a, a free business hotline as well, which would help you on general business matters, HR, and all, all sorts of other things. That's quite often worthwhile, is it in business? It's difficult to be knowledgeable and jack of all trades, and quite often you get issues piling up. You think, oh, I need to talk to someone with some knowledge about that area, and you can ring one of the hotlines and they'll put you in touch with someone who can help you. At least to get a bit of a basic outline of uh, where you are, how you can deal with the problem, how you can go forward. Um, it's supposed to be 
big in excess of 28,000 pages of tax legislation. Uh, you're going to find it difficult to find people who know all those pages. So lots of practices have expertise in different fields. As I said, ours is a general practice. Um, we, it's difficult to categorise, but we, we have professionals, trainers, property people, um, a wide range. And we get quite a lot of queries that are not necessarily council related, they're just general business queries. And uh, clients ring up as the first port of call. And you know, if we can't help, we can perhaps put them in touch with someone who can. Of late, we've had um, quite a, a bit from new clients who got into a bit of a pickle with the tax man, um, coming in for some help to sort them out. Possibly because they've ignored all the filing requirements. Um, they've done something that has triggered an inquiry from the tax man. Um, they may have been renting a property or properties for a few years, haven't returned the income, all of a sudden they decide to sell one. The uh, property transfer form now has your name and address, your national insurance number, all the contact details, that filters through to revenue, they link it to you, they look at your tax return. Oh, Taxpayer has properties, he's just sold a property, there's no income on his forms, doesn't even submit any forms. So they send the letter out. We've had that quite a bit lately. The revenue systems are linking up with other governmental departments more and more. Uh, I'm, I'm continually amazed that they are not more linked to the, um, the Council Tax Business Rates Department. Uh, as if you're letting property, obviously. Tenants paying his council tax, he's got his name there. All they need to do is that, link that to the uh, land registry and we'll see if there's a difference. Make an inquiry. So, in the future, you, you'll see more and more revenue coming out, investigations from the information they collect from all sorts of government agencies. And of course, then, um, the inquiry will involve divulging information. We never know what information the revenue have got, so you have to approach it carefully. Um, you don't want to give false information because that could just dig in your problem deeper. Deeply, you don't want to give too much, possibly, because you could be giving things away which then lead the revenue to ask further questions in other directions. So it's a bit of a balance. Uh, unpaid, unpaid tax that arises from that, there will be a penalty, late payment penalty, and there will be a penalty for non-disclosure. That penalty is decided upon a table as to how they grade you. Was it uh, um, a disclosure that you should have made? Was it negligence? Was it ordering fraud? fraud? And depending on how they classify you within their table, depend on how much the penalty percentage is. They go up to 100% of the tax you owe, so your tax bill for undeclared income can snowball. Initially, they might only go back one or two years, they could go back six years, they could go back 20 years or more. So, you can be building up a bit of a, uh, a liability if you're not careful. I don't know in the audience here whether you're property people, business people, um, or what type of thing you're, you're earning your money from. There's a lot of uh, property people who come in for their tax returns to be done, etc. And the, the question we're always getting now is, oh, should I buy more property? Is it a good investment? Etc. Well, I can't read the crystal ball. Regulations are getting tighter. The costs are going up. Um, interest is being restricted. Habitation laws are coming in. Salaries aren't going up, so people might be finding it difficult to pay increasing rents. 
the capital growth market is static, so you have to take a few. I can only say from personal experience, I probably regret selling any property I have sold in the past. I should have kept on onto it and um, seen it through. If the market's gone that, like that, I've made money and lost money on property over the years. Had I actually just sat tight, I would have probably uh, be happier than I am now with it. But it can be long term. Um, in 89, I bought a small flat in London. I sold it in 96 for the same money. I then proved it considerably. Uh, in the 2000s, I was doing West End high end property refurbs. But it was a space of overnight practically 40% uh, off the top of the value of the property. All of a sudden, the banks pull the plug. They don't want to finance you, they don't want to do the roll over the interest. They want, they want their money back. Um, so, liquidations, knocking property out at a low price. Um, it's a, a business where you can make money and lose money. But if you sit tight and wait for the market to come back, you'll probably be okay. And if over 20, 30 years, you've had some properties that have been rented out, people have bought the properties for you, and hopefully you're left with no mortgage and a small property portfolio or even a bigger one. Um, portfolio, portfolio, this is a, a question we're getting quite a bit lately. Should people transfer their properties into a company? Well, you need to look at the individual circumstances. There are possibly a couple of routes to do that. The reliefs don't apply in all cases. The revenue don't regard property income, rental, um, as a business for their rollover relief. There has been some challenges in the courts, uh, but it, it, it's principally based on how much effort you're putting into your portfolio. Are you there every day managing it? If you've got a property agent manager there doing all that, the chances are they're not going to accept you qualifies for the rollover relief. Because they won't consider that you're involved enough. It's just a pure investment in their eyes. If you're buying companies now fresh, well, yeah, you might well look at putting it into a company. If it's one property, it might not be worthwhile. Um, because the professional fees annually to deal with that might eliminate any real benefit immediately, but worth looking at. So I think that's like a quick summary through accountancy, tax, um, and so I'm going to hand over to my colleague Nalu now, who's going to give a brief whip through on um, the financial products that Goldman's Finance uh, can offer you. Some other trading type of business. Do 
I've got property and a, and I've got business and a business as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Property. It's mainly property. Have you had any problems in those areas? In terms of tax issues or accounting issues? No. No? No problem. Smooth ride. Yeah. I don't know if I yeah. can I ask a question? What's the yeah. question? I wanted to ask um, about because you said you mentioned about moving a property into the business. The company, yeah. If I move one one property mm -hmm. into the business, yeah, and then uh, manage it through the business. So um, the gentleman was asking what the actual question was. He was asking would it be feasible for him to actually transfer his property to his um, a limited company. Um, now while, while I've actually got the mic, um, Martin has been an accountant for many decades. So apart from the actual promotional side, we'd be happy to take the questions and answers uh, relating to accounting, uh, finance brokerage, uh, we do commercial and residential loans, as my, my colleague said. I'm a solicitor, and so is my colleague. So it's a multidisciplinary, but we've got a front which he heads. So any questions that you have, we'll be happy to answer. Pro bono, for this evening. Yeah? So yeah, that was the question. Any other questions, feel free to fire. Basically, a loan is a loan. It's a marketplace. 
in recent years there's loads of lenders coming into the marketplace. Um, secured or unsecured. With a, with, a, with a tag, a VAT loan, um, working capital loan, loan for this, loan for that. At the end of the day, it's a loan, secured or unsecured, uh, with terms attached uh, and the rates. So it's a question of looking for the lender that will lend for the purpose you want at the rate you want to pay. And there's many out there, and they're all keen to do it. Um, Lenders tend to quite often check, uh, choose their marketplace because they get comfortable with the marketplace. And um, it's, it's a question from a broker's point of view to find those lenders in that marketplace that suit you. It can be uh, quite exhausting um, just from the pure point of view of, of going through and trying to select. And there are um, programs, etc., clubs brokers can join to try and speed up that process so you can um, de define your your area of requirement tightly um, to get the best deals. Um, going forward, well, I think most businesses are holding back on big decisions at the moment because uh, they don't know what's going to happen and the, the, uh, the government wants more money in, the tax people are more aggressive. Um, I'm involved in a case at the moment which we thought was cut and dry and the, uh, the revenue are picking up on a very strange point that um, nobody I've spoken to at the moment in the profession has seen picked up before. The, guy, the revenue is even saying that um, he's had instructions from above on a previous occasion that it, it's not a, uh, an issue under question, but he's still challenging it. So my, my feeling of the revenue at the moment is that any scheme that they can see a grey area in, they will challenge, and they will sit there and make the taxpayer do the running. It doesn't cost them any money, cost the taxpayer possibly a lot of money and a lot of aggravation and worry. And um, if, if they end up issuing an assessment, the taxpayer has the choice to appeal or not. To appeal would cost them money. Uh, if they don't appeal and pay the tax, the revenue will won, even though the point possibly hasn't been clarified. Um, so it can be a dangerous area. Nearly all the what were called tax avoidance schemes, not tax evasion, tax avoidance schemes, have all been challenged now, and uh, they have nearly all been thrown out. And there's uh, many people with assessments having, having to pay large sums of tax. You may have read in the news recently about some of the uh, television presenters who have had single company trading situations, uh, and Again, it's a grey area because you might find one that just slips through and they won't accept it and another one where they won't accept it and they've been through the tribunals and the courts or whatever and there's a, there's a fine difference between the cases. So, whereas before, with the tax avoidance scheme and the promoters come along, so we've got tax counsel's advice, we've got specialist tax advice, they're all saying it should be okay. And I would have probably gone, well, these guys are in the know, they're the specialists, okay. Probably now I'd say to any client who comes along with it and say, well, I wouldn't touch it. Uh, because you just don't know what's going to happen in the future. Okay, I think we're going to wind up at that point. Please come and see us on stand 861. And uh, any questions you don't want to raise in open form, you can raise on a one-to-one. -one. And uh, we'd like to see you. And uh, if you... <laughs> If you like a cup of coffee in Baker Street, give us a call.